Hello and welcome to Brain Critic, Hollywood's worst film critics. Today on the show, we're going to talk about none other than the great hit Wreck It Ralph that came out what, like three months ago, four months I'm ago. I'm going to wreck it. Yeah. Nice. How many months ago now? Second of November, so Couple. today is March. It is 19th. March 19th. 19th. Random fact, it is March 19th. It is March 19th. So here with me, I am Brian Christie, your great host. With me is one of my usual co-hosts, Miss Carissa Carpentier, to my back behind me left thing. And our, a new co-host we have today and on the show for random sporadic moments, we have Miss Cindy Caddick. Hi. All right. So we're going to talk Wreck-It Ralph. But before we talk about Wreck-It Ralph, we have to talk about the great short that came out before it, which um, it, that it played it before theaters, kind of stealing from Pixar a little bit. It's a Disney, what are you going to do? The, yeah. The short, none, none other than Paper Man. Oh Paper Man. my God, that animation is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. If I could marry it, I would. You're going to marry an art style? Yes. You're going to marry uh, the art pencil? style, the plot, the everything? I wish I could say something against that, but I have no right to talk. Anyway. True, Miss Artist over here. <laughs> it's just the, the fact we? that it, it looks like a moving charcoal drawing, and they did it so perfectly. It's just, oh, I love it. And it's just so cute. Oh, my goodness. I'm a, I'm a sucker for romance, I'd say. It is, it's it's a really so cute ro romance, particularly because it's like it's not your. It's the classic like kind of awkward nerdy guy who's trying to get the attention of the girl, which I think is like one of those ones that everybody just gushes over. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like love at first sight pulled with a twist. Yeah, yeah, which is good because it's not just generally oh I love you. It's it's oh my god I want to see this person again and you have to go through all these trials to right? get to her. Throwing a hundred paper airplanes and hitting a, a wall. That's something I, I found surprised that so many people caught on. I thought people would get so, like, weirded out by the fact, like, he's throwing paper airplanes and all of a sudden they're just magically coming to life. I thought everyone would be like, that makes no sense. That's just weird blah, but everyone bought into it easily. Well, it doesn't make sense. Which I was sense, happy to see. But it's well, it doesn't. Cute. Yeah. It's just like, all right, they're trying to help him win the love of his life. Apparently. I just, like, like when he was on the train and the paper airplanes were holding him down, he's just trying to get it and he goes, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the coolest things I think I found about this was just the lack of any spoken dialogue in the whole thing. Yeah. And it's like, they don't even, like, make noises or grunts or anything. It's just solely a couple little sound effects and stuff like that, like car horns and stuff like that, and then just the music, which the music itself is great. The soundtrack, the oh, score behind yeah. it is so pretty and just works so well with the, um, it tells the story so perfectly well that words really couldn't. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think was one of the best factors about this. One of my favorite things was the soundtrack to this story it was just so it was just it's, it was so like pure and simple yeah yeah which i think was great this is one of those shorts that makes me put hope back in disney and that they're yeah. not all horrible bad people <laughs> another thing that they did actually really well was the fact that you could see their emotions just perfectly from their facial expressions yeah. you don't mm. need the words you look on their face you can tell what they're thinking you can tell kind of what they're gonna do what they want to do what's affecting them it's and it really entices you and gets you into the animation. Hmm. It pulls you in, and that's something that Disney usually does pretty well. It goes back to the times where they didn't have sound or even color, and just all you had was some sa some soundtrack and just the actions of um, the actors and facial expressions to tell the story. And it's like they kind of harken back to it in this, so like with the animation style being like in that charcoal black and white style, and just no spoken words, just nothing but the soundtrack and some car horns and stuff like that. Yeah. And it just turned out so great. It's, um, this short and this movie is something that, um, like, just, just a great achievement in Disney. It kind of puts faith back from all the lousy, cruddy other things that they've done, like Pirates 4. Yeah, I mean, like, I generally don't like non-speaking silent film type things, but, oh, hey. Hi. Um, <laughs> but... This I'll really, die like, on you. Yeah, I know. It pulls at your heartstrings, and it's just like got really into it, like you're saying, and it's just. Oh. It's simple. It's not it's something. It's simple. It's not cheesy. Yeah. It's just simple and romantic, and something you wouldn't expect. Like I didn't expect all the airplanes to suddenly come pick him up, and drive him towards her. That it's was the really magic wicked. of love. Yeah, it's wicked cute. But <laughs> it did work very well. It's just, it's just. One of those things that I think just Disney did right and just mm -hmm. couldn't have really done a better job. And as scary of a claim as this is, considering the last episode we did was all Pixar movies, mm -hmm. I think that I think I like this better than almost any Pixar short ever. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think this beats out almost all of them. The only rival would probably have to be um, 
I already forget the name of it, but the old guy playing chess in the park. That's cute. Just because yeah. that's a classic. That, that one is a that classic. Is. Then I like the, um, what was it? I think it came before uh, Monsters, Inc. It was like the uh, the little finches on the, the, birds, the wire. Yeah. The birds. Oh, I love that the birds. One. So that cute. cute. That's a great. Love I wish that. more movies did this, having the little shorts beforehand. I just think it's, it's just a fun little thing mm. to kind of just throw in these short little stories just for the sake of throwing them in. I think it's just such a neat little thing, and it's fun. Yeah. It'd be awesome if we went back to the days, like, you actually sat down and you just saw, like, two movies and then there's, like, a random cartoon in the middle. Yep. Yeah, why Let's not? go back to those days, can't we? That'd be mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. But, um, so, let's get uh, and talk. Let's all oh. go to the lobby. Let's all go. Yeah, I'm not singing on TV. <laughs> Too late. I sing more of the time work. But, hey. No, wrong movie. Although, we should do that at some again. point. But, anyway, before we actually get talking to the mm-hmm. reason we're here, Wreck-It Ralph, let's just do a quick thing. Our final ratings on Paper Man, 1 out of 10. Start with Cindy. Honestly, I'm oh. going to give it a 9.5. I think th- it was most of the animation that got me, because mm. that short alone took so much time, so much effort, so many resources, and it it worked. It really worked, so 9.5. Good job. All right. Carissa? I would also say 9.5, because like Sydney, I really like the art style, and I really, you know, I like the plot behind it. It wasn't, again, so cheesy. It wasn't so predictable. And it was just like, I'm, I don't want to say the art style was, like, realistic looking, but it was just like so, I don't know, so not like different from normal animation. Yeah, it was like kind of I don't know, advanced and more sophisticated drawing. Yeah, I would think. Definitely. So nine point five. Nine point five. I think I'm probably gonna follow it up just because I don't like the idea of giving it a full ten because that yeah. just seems weird to me. But this is probably one of those films I would. But I'll say like I'll play, I'll say like nine point seven, because <laughs> seven. Um, well, weren't you a special little snowflake? <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much for the same reason like you guys. Mostly for me, it's just the story. It's just so simple, so pure, nothing contrived. Just a simple thing of a guy trying to get a girl's attention mm. and just throwing the paper airplane. Just a simple little thing. The art style is so beautifully done, and it's just such a... It's a story that's so simple and just classic, and it just did everything right for me. So, yeah, 9.7. Mm-hmm. So let's... Let's move in now to the movie that is Wreck-It Ralph. I'm gonna wreck it. Great movie. Came out on the 2nd of November. I wish I could say it was based on a real video game, but... No. Nah. Isn't it? Nope. N- no. A lot of the characters were kind of, like, influenced um, by, uh, by real video game characters, but we'll talk about that when we actually get to talking about the characters and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. But um, let's just start off right, right now with the simple story. To do the brief synopsis. Guy who's a villain, Wreck-It Ralph. His job in his video game is that he, like, breaks stuff. This whole world takes place in the world, like, all the... In an arcade, where, like, all the video games are connected, and they all the characters interact with each other and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Wreck-It Ralph wants to, like... It feels like he gets kind of, like, let down, beat down all the time because he's a villain and no one really respects him. So the movie is, like, him trying to kind of basically go on a journey to kind of find himself and prove that just because he's a bad guy doesn't mean he's a bad person. Yeah. And it evolves into just such a really... I don't know how to describe this story. It's hard to say, like, kind of how to put it into words. It's a really different... It, it, I think for the most part, it's simply summed up as, like, a finding yourself story. Yeah. It's pretty... At the simplest, it's a finding yourself kind of story. And it's not just to wreck it, Ralph. Also to the character of Vanellope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Vanellope. Yep. Um, she's adorable. It's just a really great movie. Um, the story was so good. Um... One more to say about the story. Someone else pick it up, because I'm trying to think of words. Well, here, the story, the fact that it's the whole, like, villain, what if the villain wanted to be a good guy, it's not, it's, like, completely unique. Like, I'm sure you're playing a video game, you're like, well, well what if Sephiroth actually wanted to be good? What, what if he <laughs> didn't want to kill Lara? I don't count that as spoilers. You, everybody knows that by now. I don't know what but, game you're even talking about, so. Awesome. But <laughs> it's just, like... It's something people have, like, video game fans have, comp- like, contemplated before, but now it's being realized, and it's, like, one of those things, like, you have in the back of your mind, and you're like, oh, there's a movie about it, okay, and yeah. you start thinking about it more. But this, overall, I think it it worked pretty well. It it did have some elements from, like, from like the trailer that kind of, like, not so much as Brave, where it's, like, the trailer's one thing, and you go to see the movie, it's something completely different, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but... Like I saw the the um I saw the trailer for this and I thought, oh my god, there's like so many different like so many different video game characters coming in. This is awesome, and I go see it. I'm like, okay, I didn't think that was gonna happen, but okay, it 
it yeah. works. Overall, it sounds pretty good. They they really sold like the they obviously they really sold the fact that like we got all these video game characters in here. Look how much money we spent on royalties to get these characters in this <laughs> movie. <laughs> Disney oh definitely put a few bucks in here, particularly to like um. Oh, Nintendo, Sega, all those Nintendo, other ones, all yeah. the ones they got. That's something I did during but. the movie. I did a take us up every time Disney had a pail of royalty. I ended up going through two Diet Cokes. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. That was a lot. But, um, that was, like, the big selling point. And it's, like, you kind of got the idea through the trailers that, like, okay, this is kind of a story about him being a hero. But, um, it's, like, it's still the main plot, but there's a, a lot of the subplots behind it, like, kind of really taking a turn, like, oh, okay, so... This is happening now. It's, you didn't really expect it to kind of evolve in the way it did. Particularly with, like, um, Ralph's relationship with Vanellope. Yep. You, you, mm-hmm. They don't really, like, kind of show that. You could, By the trailer, you would just think she's just kind of some brat who's just kind of messing around with him. But you don't really realize those two kind of work together for a yeah. lot of the movie. Yeah. Which is something that I thought was really great. Because I hate when you see a trailer for a movie, you go to see the movie, and there's just a trailer extended by two hours and nothing else. Yeah, right? That's yep. just boring and a waste of, like, ten bucks. It's like yep. you got all the action out of the trailer alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, um, luckily, Rick and Ralph didn't do that. It's, it's kind of hard to do that with animated features. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To kind of spoil everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like what I said before, I thought, like, the trailer for the movie said something completely different about it. Again, not like Brave, because that is another discussion. Yeah. But, um... Another episode, maybe. Like, from the trailer, I got... I understood... Ralph was a bad guy in the video game, but he wanted to be a good guy, and he wanted to do some soul searching, and that I thought he was going to go to like many different video games to yeah. find that. But when I watched the movie, he he went to Hero's Duty, and then he the jeez, not again! Stupid. Um, I hate you, Brian. <laughs> Why is that my fault? Uh, the Rick Ghost strikes again, <laughs> Daniel. Anyway, um. But like, Daniel. like, oh, yeah, I have a ghost that likes to steal things and follow me around uh, named Daniel. It's a long story. Anyway, okay. um, but like I was saying, like, like I, under- I thought he was going to go to like many, di- I thought this was going to take place in many different video games, but it's obviously uh, the beginning of a taste place in, um, fix a Felix. And then he goes to the, um, game central station. Then he goes to hero's duty for a bit. But then the rest of the movie pretty much takes place in Sugar Rush. Yeah. yeah. And I thought it was going to be, like, a bunch, like, he was going to go from world to world to world to world, but that kind of surprised me a bit. I didn't think it was going to be all about Sugar Rush. Yeah. yeah, it ended up sticking in just that world, which I think, um, I think it was probably a good decision, because I think if he kept jumping around to too many games, I think it was going to be, like, too much for people to get all these constant scene changes. I think it would just end yeah. up driving them nuts. Not to mention, it's a lot less animating they have to do if they have to yeah. animate 20 worlds. They only have to really... Animate three. Yeah. Wreck it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I keep wanting to call the game Wreck It Ralph. The game is Fix It Felix, which is, is it's just like a pile of bricks in the one building. So it's like that's not really too crazy. Then Hero's Duty, which is like the big epic thing. Then Sugar Rush is just candy <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Oh, I love the thing they did with Hero's Duty. I'm just like ah, Call of Duty. I see what you call did there. Call of Duty, Hero yeah. Duty. Ah. I see what you did there. Ah. How clever. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, I also like that they didn't do multiple worlds, because that's what I was expecting, because I was like, all right, yeah. well, we're just going to go on, like, this trip through world after world, and I was like, all right, this is going to be a lot. And yeah. I didn't really want to see this movie at first, because I, I thought that was just what it was going to be. It was going to be, oh, this guy, traveling through worlds, eventually, oh, he'll do some good deed, yay, hooray. That, nope. Nope, wasn't like that. Nope. <laughs> no, it was totally it, it, different. Yeah, it actually played out to actually, like, it wasn't... The whole movie didn't end up just being about, like, a go through all these different video games on the big screen. It actually was, like, a full-on story. It wasn't just kind of like, uh... It's, it, it wasn't just a movie for the sole sake of putting all these video game characters in a movie yeah. together. Yeah. Which the trailer kind of gives you that idea. But then you go to see it and you're like, oh, wow, this is actually better than I was expecting there's it to be. There's story behind this. There's story yeah. behind it. There's, <laughs> like, actual, like, legit stuff going on in yeah. here. Yeah. Now, was I the only... Tell me if I'm the only one who thought about this, but when I saw the trailer... I thought Sugar Rush was Candyland, and at first I thought, that's not a video game. What? I didn't really, I, I kind of looked at it, and I'm like, it looks very Candyland-like, but then, like, um, you see, like, all the go-karts and stuff like that, and you kind of go, oh, okay, it's kind of supposed to be, like, a Mario Kart sort yeah. of game. It's, it's yeah. a Mario Kart, just like Heroes Duty was basically Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Yeah. It's um, a happy Japanese peppy fun time game. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what it is. Because they got a Japanese band to do the theme song. The for Sugar Rush. For Sugar Rush, yeah. The characters are very anime-like. Yeah. And it's just so happy kawaii desu. 
yeah, it, it just fits in the whole, like, Japanese style of video game. It's like, that was the Nintendo, that was, like, the Nintendo game, and you got Call of Duty, which was your PlayStation, Xbox, yep. blah, blahs. And honestly, I just thought Fix-It Felix was just a ripoff of Donkey Kong. Honestly, that's what I felt like it was. Well, there's a lot Base... of games that have that style yeah. of... A lot of the original Donkey Kong games had, the very first Mario game, which was called Donkey Kong, had this similar style to that, but, um, well, I think that's probably what that one game was based on, I can't really think of any other games that had the, like, wrecking and breaking, running off fixing it, I don't know a game with those exact yeah. mechanics, yeah. but it more or less was, um, particularly because, like, wreck ralph was kind of based on Donkey Kong in a way, and Fix-It Felix was obviously straight up, like, the Mario character, I mean, really, yeah. that's just obvious. Plumber, Fix-It, you know. Yeah, Plumber, Fix-It, uh, <laughs> except, what? Well, Actual plumbing does Mario do besides the fact that he goes through pipes? I know, right? Yeah. I didn't make that connection until years and years later. I was like, <laughs> pipes! Oh, mushrooms? Oh, like fungus in the pipes? Okay. <laughs> Turtles in the sewer? Okay. I didn't Is it sad I didn't get the mushroom thing until just now until you mentioned that it was fungus? I'm like, oh, okay. Right? Sense. Yeah, like all these things I didn't pick up on. I was a Zelda guy. I wasn't a Mario guy. What can I say? I was just a I don't know guy. And Sandy's just like, I knew this for day one. You she didn't like disappoint what? me. <laughs> I get so happy when I make those connections. But um, let's start talking about the characters yeah. now, going into all different characters. But yeah, like all most of the like the four main characters are all kind of based on um actual like legit characters like Wreck It Ralph, Donkey Kong, Fix It Felix Jr. was like basically Mario. Um, I can't remember her name, but uh, Calhoun. Calhoun. Oh, that's right in front of me. Jane Lynch. Jane Lynch. I love Jane Lynch. Oh my gosh! Anything that she's in except Glee, I will watch. Yeah. <laughs> Not too big of a fan of Grilly. Love Jane Lynch. Mm -hmm. I can appreciate her sarcasm, and someday yeah. my sarcasm will get to her level. <laughs> <laughs> I can only hope. She did that role perfectly. She was kind of like, um, like she was obviously like kind of supposed to be like the Call of Duty Halo-ish kind of Samus sort of character. Samus, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was feeling. Well, with the, the whole fact that like she's like the girl yeah. running around doing all like the crazy stuff, it kind of gets the Samus feel. And yeah. then you got um, uh, Vanellope, which I don't know if she was like necessarily based on a particular character. I mean, I remember seeing, like, one thing on the internet one time where they had, like, a picture of her with, um, Missing No, the glitch from, uh, the original Pokemon games. <laughs> so some people kind of made the joke that maybe that's what she was kind of so based on. I'm like, oh, I don't think she was necessarily no. based on it. I think it was just kind of, like, a funny thing. Like, hey, yeah, she's think, kind of like the glitch. I think that was different. I don't think there were any she wasn't connections. She wasn't necessarily, I think, inspired by, like, a character or her design or anything. She was just kind of created for the sake of the game and the movie. Yeah. yeah. She wasn't really, like based on anything but um she's cute though so she's adorable really great characters in this movie i think that's one of the reasons i my biggest thing in movies i'm like unless you got decent characters that i can love and relate to i don't care it that's my big selling point for me with movies and this one sold it ralph wreck it ralph is such he was such a good character so much all all the character development was great mm -hmm. um vanellope was great she was so adorable just so funny um, and lovable, because, like, yeah. how can you not love her? Because she's just <laughs> yeah. adorable and ridiculous and silly. Um, I didn't expect, um, what was her name? Cal Calhoun? Calhoun. To have, like, the softer side. I didn't oh expect that. Oh, my God. Her, she, was <laughs> she was programmed to have the most tragic <laughs> backstory. Right? Oh, like, my God. Uh, <laughs> that was so sad. I'm like, no! But it's so true when you think about how often they do stuff like that yeah. in video games. You just yeah. give them the most tragically, almost unrealistic backstory Orphan you can possibly think of. Orphan children. My parents are dead. My parents are dead. My lover was killed, and now I'm out for revenge. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so they kind of made fun of that ploy with her, which was great. <laughs> People have to die. People have a hero. Have die. Yeah. Death brings a hero. And that's like the classic... Um, King Candy. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh my God. Oh my God. They like briefly mentioned Turbo. Briefly. And then it was just like, what? It's just like, hey, that? you kidding? Yeah, the uh, spoiler alerts. If, well, if you're watching the show, you should be expecting spoilers, especially if you've watched it for it's as many episodes. spoiled for you. Yeah. <laughs> but like the whole thing, because like they briefly mentioned Turbo, because like, that, I loved how they introduced that plot, with mm -hmm. the whole thing with Turbo and like saying going Turbo. They, intru they introduced that well. Like, it wasn't, like, outright at the beginning of the movie, like, um, like some movies. That they basically, like, give you the yeah, plot like and basically tell you... Yeah, once upon a time, you, there was a villain named yeah. Turbo, and he went Turbo. Yeah, I noticed like, a lot of movies seem to tend to do that. 
now they kind of give you like the main plot at the yeah. beginning and basically reveal like. Ten minutes in the film, you already know what the ending's going to be because they yeah. basically told you. Yeah. Well, this one, they kind of just... They keep mentioning, like, how he's going turbo, and they finally explain, well, there was this... The video game, uh... Tur- well, I forget what it was. Turbo-tastic! Yeah, I, I forget what it was oh. saying, like, uh, Turbo like Thunder some, or something like that. Yeah, I don't know some race say. car game. But yeah, and then he got, like, replaced, yeah. and how, like, he jumped to another game, got it unplugged, and both games got shut down. Yep. So, like, that kind of became the phrase. And it's like, it's never mentioned again, really much, that the case of this... Like, even after that, they don't really say, like, he's going turbo much, because at that point, they pretty much said most of the movie in yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sugar Rush. Yeah. And then it's, like, all of a sudden, and then you got, like, King Candy, who, like, you pretty much just assume he's just kind of, like, a crazy, silly, nutcase king, and then yeah. all of a sudden, boom, he's turbo. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. You never think it, because... What a twist! Because that blew my mind. They do such a good job just kind of making it seem like, yeah, and turbo's just gone, because... Nobody ever saw him again. They just kind yeah. of assumed he got unplugged with the game. But it's like, oh, no, he's alive. He just took over a whole nother game. And you're like, okay, yeah. then. Because you just figured, yeah. like, he went crazy and swabbed and stuff. And then he got unplugged. And then, you know, he just never came back. So then they just make an example of him. But then, oh, he's still alive. He's in another game. And, the one, and he was the guy you didn't expect. And the one yeah. thing I know is just, like, um, when Ralph's still in the cupcake and they bring him over to his kingdom. And he goes, Ralph, you're not going turbo, are you? And you're, you you got that mindset of, okay, he understands the whole tur- going turbo Yeah, thing. that's like... The, and then you're just like, but wait, you're turbo, you and are. you... Oh, I see what you that's did there. That's something great, because like, the actual clever. fact that he actually used the phrase, are you going turbo, and stuff like that, because like, that's actually him. He's the one who did it, and yeah. it's currently still yeah. actually going going turbo, per se. So it's like, it they did that so well, and just kept it so well hidden. Of course, like yeah. after you realize it, you kind of sat there and went... Oh, duh, of course he is. That just makes perfect <laughs> sense yeah. for him to be that. That makes sense why he do- why he does the thing he does, doesn't like Penelope and stuff like that. Yeah. So it just it fits in so well, and it was such a well that thing. Plus, awesome. King Candy was just funny. He's someone who can actually do puns right and make them funny. Hush up. Hush up. You hit a guy with glasses. Funny. Oh, you actually hit a guy with glasses. Okay, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that was funny. Mm-hmm. Hey, my puns are great. Don't even. By the way, we all have glasses pointing that out. You have glasses? <laughs> Way to be the rebel. I would take mine off, but I won't be Hit you with glasses. Hit a girl with glasses. There you go. Ha, ha, ha. The joke's not complete. She's going to kill me once I finish filming Probably. the show now. But, um, the other great characters they had, um, pretty much the main five were Ralph, and LV, Felix, Cowhart, and then like King Candy. The people who lived in the suites. Can I say something? What was his name? Gene? The guy who's like... No, Ralph, you're not supposed to be here. That little yeah. guy, I, think, I yeah. hated him. Yeah, I hate yeah he I was. hated he, him. At least Felix kind of felt bad for Ralph, but then Jean was just like, eh, you suck. Go yeah, away. He never got what he had coming to him. He was yeah, a I jerk know. in the beginning, he was a jerk in the end, and nothing bad happened he to him. He should have ended up in the dump. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He should have ended up living in the dump. <laughs> I mean, I think he kind Which of... Which is where Ralph was. That was interesting. That's one of the things that kind of really... He didn't really get like his karma or anything like that, Gene. Um, which I found weird, but I think um I think it's just kinda of assumed he learned his lesson when because of how much he mocked Ralph and how much he pushed him, nearly got their game unplugged. So I think it's kinda of just assumed he kinda of learned from that, like Yeah, but he still mocked him at the end. It's like, oh well now you can live in the penthouse. Yeah, he's still kind of a jerk, which it stinks and like nothing ever really happened to him. Yeah. Um, I guess it just kinda of felt it wasn't really anything that needed to be solved, which I was like I was fine with that. They never really brought it up. He was just kind of there to instill the plot. And I mean, what were you going to do? I'm like, Ralph can't just go and like punch him into the dirt ground because that would kind of defeat the purpose. It would kind of defeat the done. purpose of like what the whole movie was about. I was kind of hoping they threw him off the building. Oh. So Ralph. Yeah, he, they didn't really like do anything with him. I guess he, they basically he they was probably not, just assumed he said sorry and blah. That was done. Yeah. He was not that bad of a villain to be thrown into the dump. I guess so. they should kind of include him with like all the all the I forget what the like all the people were called that lived in the, know. in the building. They had a name for all of them. I just but call them sweet people. The uh, there was like a name for what they called all of them. I can't remember what it was. I want to say townies, but I know that's not it. Um. No, that's that's what the mascot is at my high school. The, we don't know. I forget what they called, but like they all like at the end of the movie, like they all kind of show like, we're sorry for what we did. We understand now and stuff like that. So I guess they kind of, so he, I guess so Gene was just kind of included in that. How they all just kind of apologized, saying like. We're sorry. We understand. We should have treated you a lot better. We shouldn't have treated you like this and yeah. blah, blah, blah. So I think he was just kind of um, wrapped up in all of that. 
Um, like not to mention the the um, other racers in uh, uh, Sugar Rush. Oh my the, God, the their names. Act of Vanilla. Yeah, all the all the goofy <laughs> names. Uh, let's see if I can pull them up. Uh, Taffeta Mutton Fudge. Oh yeah, Taffeta um, Mutton Fudge. Oh, uh, I forget what some of the other ones are. One of them had my favorite favorite name. I can't remember. Uh, they're they're not here in the castle. Let me pull up the full one. Full casting crew. Let's see. I'm trying to remember what the names are. I know they were funny as anything. Root beer Tepper. Oh no, that's Tapper. Root beer Tapper. No, 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 Tapper wasn't. He was the the. Uh, oh, he, he was, was the dude. Yeah, he was the, the one that like I looked at him like is he supposed to be Mario because he basically looked exactly yeah, like Mario yeah. except his yeah. mustache was a little more like yeah yeah ridiculous. <gasps> Sour Bill. Oh my God, Sour Bill. Sour Bill. He's just like which one was Sour Bill? He was the, he was the little uh, green ball thing. Oh, that's and right. And he's just the like little... he's like tell me what they're doing. Yeah. He's like no. <laughs> you are adorable. Oh yeah, he was. You, fu- he was, he was the Squidward of the movie. <laughs> he was. I think he had the nose word too, if I remember correctly. Crumbelina. Crumbelina. Yep. There it is. Candy uh, head. Flugger butter. Francis Flugger butter. Francis Flugger butter. I love that. Great names. Great names. <laughs> that is the best name. Uh, oh God, Zangief. Zangief. That was great. The scene at the beginning was great with like just. Like, all the villains in there because it was just an epic mm. like you've got the zombie from the Left for Dead yep. with Bowser with Who's Dr. Here? Eggman with Zen Geef <laughs> and Bowser has his little cup and his little <laughs> swirls and he's just like it was it, oh my god I love that the movie started all, out with that like that being one of the first things after like kind of wrecking mm-hmm. around was like explaining like his whole backstory yeah. to the group that was just um Oh, and also, um, uh, 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 Street Fighter. Dang it. He's going to take over the world, of course, guy. What? I can't think of his name. Bison. Yes. Bison. That was the other one. And Bison. And Bison in there. I was kind of sitting there. When I noticed he was in the movie, I'm like, please make him say, of course. Please of make course. Him say, of course. <laughs> please make him do that joke. Oh, then the, thanks, Satan. It's pronounced Satin. I'm just like, Satan! Uh, I heard Satan. someone shout that when I first went to go see the movie. It's just like, Satan! <laughs> I'm curious what model, like, which particular, because, I mean, let's face it, Satan's, like, the villain of, like, too many games that count. I'm just curious, like, his design in the movie, if that was based off a particular game. I haven't been mm. able to find anything really on it. I never really researched it, so I'm not sure. Yeah, most but... of the movies have anything close to do with Satan. It's just filled with zombies, like, Satan. the one that was there. Yep. With the two axes. He was supposed to be, like, the, I think he's called, like, the Johnny Zombie from uh, Left 4 Dead. Mm-hmm. Johnny uh, Yeah, that one's called Johnny Runs around like two axes. Except that thing, he usually has a hockey mask on. Oh my. I think, he, um, but I think it depends on the game. Maybe they didn't want to think like, oh, Jason Voorhees or something like that. I don't yeah. know. No, that really wouldn't make sense. Um, oh, and also the Pac-Man ghost. Oh, uh, yeah. Ghost. That was great. He was like the leader of the group, wasn't he? He was yeah. kind of the one that like hosted the little yeah. like, zo- uh, zombie. The uh, brain critic. I keep thinking about zombies. Now mm-hmm. I'm hungry. Uh, for brains. <laughs> wow. But yeah, like the little like, uh, Evil villains, powwow, thing sort of thing. I know they had a name for it, but yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Mm-hmm. But um, some like AAA type thing. No. AAA. What? Uh, AAA. Uh, what? Alcoholics Sorry. Anonymous. Yeah. Oh, that's thing. what she means. Yeah, something like that's that. That's what it meant. My name's Ralph. Too Hi, many A's. Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Sorry. Yeah. They didn't do that, which I found kind of surprising. <laughs> I am Zangief. Oh, no, no. I am bad guy. Oh no, they didn't do that. They did it with Zangief. I Zangief. Yeah. Oh my. But, um, all right, let's move on to talking about the um. I haven't keeping track of time, but um, talk about the animation style of um, animation. the movie. Uh, it's very generic Disney. Like compared to Paper Man, it's very mm. straightforward. Like yeah. it's it's just the the one thing I tend to do is I compare Disney to DreamWorks. DreamWorks puts a lot more like th- there's a lot more detail in their animation. Mm. Because one thing I did was I took, like, um, the original character sketches and the final animation of Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians and compared it to Wreck-It Ralph. You can see every single individual stitch in Jack's sweater, but then you look at Ralph and it's just like, eh, okay, he's animated pretty decently, I guess, but yeah. it's it's just straightforward. It's just a shirt. It's like, it's like <clears throat> drawing a t-shirt and it's just a t-shirt. That's Wreck-It Ralph. But then adding the clothes wrinkles and the 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 um 
the fold lines, that's DreamWorks. That's Jack. Well, I think you also think about, like, in this case, like, what the movie was taking place in. Because I think it was taking place in a video game. Video game. Particularly yeah. in ones like Wreck-It Ralph, which is, like, all pixels and stuff like that. The only one really having, like, major details being Hero's Duty and yeah. um, Sugar Rush. And when you yeah. look at Hero's Duty, like, obviously the armor was a little more, like, you can see all the pieces. The armor is a little more detailed. Yeah. But not as uh, much. Not as much as, like, DreamWorks not to style, a, a no. big... Not to a big, like, yeah. standard, like, no. oh my god! But I think if they did that, because, like, they try to keep Riker Ralph's, like, simple Ralph himself a simple animation, because he comes from a simple anime game of all 8-bit, 16-bit yeah. kind of yeah. style, World. if they made, like, Heroes Duty, like, the real HD crazy stuff that, like, games it was based on really are, I think the jump would just be, like, too drastic, and it would yeah. just look so awkward seeing, like, this super HD, really done animated character next to... Yeah, but also you know, kinda, it kind of it would say it would make a statement though, just like video games in the past compared to video games now. Like I understand not making Ralph eight bit throughout the whole movie because that would just kind of get annoying. Oh, that would just annoying. go crazy. No, yeah. that'd be annoying. But still, the it's 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 Disney. I don't think yeah. they did anything significantly special with the animation for Record Ralph. No, I, I like for me, I think the animation worked with um the kind of story they tell and the kind of world it was in because it was in a video game. Yeah. world like it, it's not going to be like as detailed while like because you compared it to um rise of the guardians that was taking place in like the real world and stuff like that granted these are all fictional yeah. characters but they were oh, all Jack. like the real thing they were all like real people in like the real world so it kind of made more sense for it to be a little more detailed to look as realistic as possible yeah. record ralph it's like it's taking place in a video game world it's like we can you can kind of get away with having a more a very smooth out animation that doesn't really have like yeah. fine detail because most yeah. video games don't have that sort of fine detail. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, just Disney and DreamWorks in general have like different animation styles. One, yeah. they they animate differently. Just, I mean, I I like Disney's animation. I think they do a pretty good. They did a really good job with it, but mm. it's you, it didn't stand out. It was nothing big. Like Paper Man was like, oh my god. This is awesome! Look, look what you did! Look, the charcoal's moving. There's That's a reason so why that cool. one. There's a reason why that short won an Oscar. Yeah, that was amazing. Also, but because then, I don't think anyone would have known any of those shorts. I didn't know any of the other shorts. Yeah, neither but I mean, just in general, the animation for for Rick and Ralph, it, it was it was okay. It was nothing bad about it, but it didn't like wow me. Hmm. I think it worked. It worked for the style of the movie and the kind of world it was in the setting. It 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 just. I think for me, it just worked. Yeah. Like obviously, it wasn't anything spectacular. Like even obviously, like even a lot of the Pixar movies, outdo a lot of what Disney does without Pixar. Which I think this is the first film that animated film that Disney has done that wasn't Pixar. Tangled. In, was except just for Disney. except for Tangled, and Tangled was pretty good. Tangled was amazing. Back on the topic, so I can say something, but um. <laughs> I appreciate the art style for the way it is. Nobody cares, Carissa. I know, I'm you kidding. don't care. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I'm, I'm kidding. just saying anything me. anyway. I love my friend. Look at my friend. This is my friend, everybody. Hi. Where is those scissors? Um, so it's far away from you. <laughs> I appreciate it for the art style because of like what Brian said, because it's like in a video game world, and it should be simpler. And like Heroes Duty was kind of like beefed up more than Ralph himself. That's because, yeah, you basically said everything I wanted to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Oh, my God. I don't think head. that having to see every stitch in Ralph's clothing or every little uh, dent in whatever her name is. Calhoun. Calhoun's Calvin. suit Calvin's. would have made too much of a difference for me because I was more focused on the story and it being a video game movie. No, yeah, I mean, that's what made the, the movie great. They yeah. didn't need to make any of the extra detail or animation. The story and the characters and the voice acting was great. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, the animation itself didn't really stand out. But, yeah. like, when I went to go see Rise of the Guardians, the story was great. Voice acting was fantastic. I mean, Alex Baldwin is Russian Santa. <laughs> but, like, I'm looking at this Nothing. animation, and I'm like, oh my god, it's gorgeous. It is. But Disney, it, yeah. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm, I no, like you know. Disney's animation. I'm just mm. saying it didn't stand out. It's just okay. Disney does when they do it's anime Disney. movies. They actually do try to do, like, tell a good story. Um, it's like Disney's live, Disney's non-animated movies that they do, particularly in recent years, have just have been eh. 
Particularly when they try to make too many sequels, I'm still... Yeah. I've never even seen Pirates 4, but just the whole idea that they made a Pirates yeah. 4 just irks me, but that'll be another well, episode whenever I get around, to, we get around to seeing it. But, not, but yeah. um... Like, even, like, Pixar takes things a little more, like, in detail and stuff like that, particularly because Pixar is well-praised, I think, for yeah. their animation and their stories. They kind of do a great in- thing of both, which DreamWorks did a fantastic... has done great over the yeah. past couple of years. I haven't really liked DreamWorks until, like... How to Train Shrek. Dragon was the first one that actually started to get me into liking DreamWorks again. Yeah. But, um... Shrek? We'll definitely have to talk about Shrek was ones. good. The, the first one was good. Sh- yeah. yeah. Alright, the first one was the good. The sequels never needed to happen. No, no, no. They just For, didn't need The to first happen. one was good. The second one was hilarious when they had to go to it Far, Far Away. Good. The yeah. third one, I don't remember. And the fourth one, I don't remember. I don't think anyone really remembers it. The third one. The third sucked. one was about the whole thing of them having kids, I think. Yeah, and, and then um, the fourth one was, was like... Arthur? I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they brought went to in go. Arthur. They went to bring King Arthur because Shrek didn't want to be king or something like that. Yeah, yeah. stupidness. And wasn't that the fourth? No, that was the third one. I don't even remember the what the fourth, fourth one was, was about. The fourth one was Rumpelstiltskin, maybe? Oh, yeah, it was know. something Rumpelstiltskin. I, that one was, I don't um, know anyone who actually went to see the fourth one. One and two were the best ones. One was the absolute best. Yeah. But yeah. I was just mentioning it because of, again, the animation where you could like yeah. see for DreamWorks. every... Yeah. So. Well, I mean, Pixar also does a lot more detail <clears throat> than, like, let's say, like, look for, uh, like, Monsters, Inc. The, mm. like, this on Sully. You could see every, every single hair. hair. That's yeah. wonderful. Or even, like, looking at Wally, like, you can see, like, every little piece of dirt and dent in his, um, yeah. his, his yep. chassis and everything. It's great. It's that little extra effort that really makes it. Mm-hmm. It really is. But, um, like, I think this one, like, the story compelled it so much, the animation... Like, uh, the animation, I think, was great for, like, the story it was telling. It just yeah. worked with the setting in the world and everything like that. It just it just fit well, and I think it was great. It wasn't, like, horribly, horribly animated. That I was like, oh, God, this is so fake. Yeah. It looked it looked realistic for the world it was set in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to assume we're probably getting close to the, about the half-hour half mark. Um, <laughs> Milk Robert director has given us the, oh, yeah, we probably already hit it over. That's okay. They like hearing us talk. I'll, I'll edit it. One way or another. But anyway, let's wrap this up. Let's give our ratings. We'll start with Sydney again. Or Ralph, I'll give it... I'm going to give it a solid 8. I like the story. I like the characters. Voice acting was great. Just, just pretty good. Give it an 8. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't, like, fantastic. I mean, I really like it and everything. <coughs> but I give it a solid 8. Mm. I tend to like movies that can surprise me. And usually they don't surprise me, because I can call the ending, like, as soon as I see the first scene. But this movie did surprise me, and the animation was great. I thought the story was really compelling, and it kind of kept me on my feet. I didn't see most of that stuff happening, really. And, um, so I give it a 9, because I thought it was really great. I'm giving it a 9. All right. Great story. It's classic finding yourself story told in a new way that I think just worked beautifully with this story. Um, it's it's one of those ones that almost anybody can relate to. It don't matter if you catch all the video game references and know half the characters that have to like, little um, cameos that some characters make. Sonic? It, uh, Son- well, yeah. Everywhere. It's everywhere with Sonic. I mean, obviously, uh, they got a lot of royalties from Sega. Uh... But, um, it's like, even if you think you won't get it because you don't catch the video game references, it don't matter. It's still a great story for people who even are not mm-hmm. video gamers at all. It's just a great story, good animation, characters and voice acting were superb. I mean, Jane Lynch, if you're a fan of Jane Lynch, I mean, this is Jane Lynch. this is one of her best voice acting moments. It's I Jane think. Lynch in a video game. It, it's, it's <laughs> Jane Lynch. It's Jane Lynch Wait, can you go wrong? playing, uh, playing a, just a kick-butt chick with a gun and just... It's just great. It's great. Um, final rating. I think I'm gonna go. Um, this is a hard. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play like in between you two and say eight point five. I think. I'm gonna go with eight point five on this one. So that is, Wrecker Ralph and also Paper Man. Check them out. Paper Man is like all over YouTube because everyone awesome. in the world fell in love with it when it came out. Wrecker Ralph is on DVD now. I think because yep. it has to be. I saw it in the store just like in what? In the store 10, near you. In the store near you. Um, so go check it out. Definitely worth your time. Great movie. We'll see you next time here on Anchor TV. Shoutouts to Milka for being an awesome producer and director. That's it for this episode of Brain Critic. We'll catch you next time. Bye.